Hello and welcome back. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about something that you don't need to know. So if you wanna just skip this video and get on to the next one, by all means, go for it. But there's this thing that happens in organic chemistry called rotating light. And they tell us, and you can actually show it experimentally, so it does happen, that if you put a bunch of molecules that are chiral and you put only one kind of them, so you don't put both kinds of them in. You put one kind of them in, and then you shine. Whoa. Okay, that, that wasn't part of what you needed to know either. Ugh. And then you shine polarized light, and we'll talk about polarized light in just a minute. You shine polarized light through it that has a certain orientation. As it goes through this molecule, this m collection of molecules, it'll actually rotate that light, and the light will come out pointing in a different direction than it when it came in. And you know, if you had a bunch of molecules that were exactly aligned like this and, and it, it interacted with that and rotated it, it wouldn't surprise you maybe that much that it could do that. But remember, these molecules are sitting there in solution or in gas phase or whatever they are. And they're just a bunch of randomly oriented molecules. So some light will come in and hit like this. Some light will come in and hit like this. Some light will come in and hit like this. And, and shouldn't that make essentially no difference? Because maybe like when it hits it like this, it'll rotate it one way. And when it hits it like that, it'll rotate it another way. And it'll all cancel out. But that's not what happens. And that always bothered me as a student. Like, how can that possibly happen? So I'm going to tell you about it. And I'm not even going to do that good of a job. I'm going to tell you, like, not going to do a fantastic job. But I'm at least going to scratch the surface and give you some idea of how a bunch of randomly oriented molecules can consistently rotate light in one direction just because it's a chiral molecule. So first we have to talk a little bit about light. And of course you know about light, you know about quantized photons, and you know that light has both wave and particle properties. We're going to talk about the wave properties of light because that's what matters for rotating light. So when we have light and we're just looking at light, it turns out it's coming at us in, you know, these waves. And waves both have a direction, right? So the wave that light's coming at your eyes, it's coming this direction, but it also has the direction of the wave. So the wave is traveling in a direction, and the wave is also pointing in a direction. And so we can talk about light, right, going up and down and up and down and up and down. <clears throat> and so this light is traveling in this direction, but also going up down. We can talk about light coming towards us. We could say, hey, look, if we look at it towards us, the wave's going up, down, up, down. Or we could say, hey, look, the wave's going this way, this way. Or we could say, hey, the wave's going this way, this way. And what regular light is, is it's a combination of all of those. So we see all sorts of different orientations of light all coming at us at the same time. When you buy polarized sunglasses, what you're actually doing is you are buying uh, sunglasses that preferentially let light coming in this direction. And the reason you do that is because when light bounces off a surface, the more likely light to, to bounce off the surface turn, turns out to be this direction for various reasons. And so you're actually trying to eliminate light bouncing off of surfaces and mostly see light that's coming directly from things. So that's what polarized sunglasses do. Right, so we can actually buy these little polarizers, and we're not going to talk about how polarizers work, let's just say that they do. And we're going to say, hey, look, um, we can preferentially pick light that goes in this direction, or goes in this direction. Now remember, as its waves are going up and down, it's also coming towards you at the same time. So there's two things going on. The wave's going up and down, and it's coming towards you at the same time, or going whichever direction that it needs to go. Now the amazing thing is, is we can actually get light to do funny things too. Like we can actually get light to rotate as it travels. So not just go like this as it comes towards you, but go like this as it comes toward you. Really, really crazy things. Um, that's called circularly polarized light. So it travels as it travels. So that's important to know that we can get specific orientations of light. And then what happens, <coughs> is let's say we are shining light through a box and it's just going up, down, up, down. So we're, we're, we're taking this one that goes like this and we're just flattening it. So it's just going up, down, up, down. There's no this component or that component to it. It's just up, down, up, down, up, down. When it goes into a box that contains chiral molecules, it depends on the nature of the chiral molecules and all sorts of things. We're not going to get into the detail of that. But that light will come out rotated, depending on the strength of the chiral molecule and how good it is at rotating light, sometimes more, sometimes less. Let's assume that it's perfect. Okay, Let's assume that it's really, really good, and it rotates that light by 90 degrees. Now, we can't actually see it anymore, but I'm going to try to show you. So we come in, 
the light's going like this. And then by the time it comes out of the box, after it's gone through molecules, it's now going like this. So as it's traveling for you, it's rotated 90 degrees. It was going up, down. Now it's going this way. And that's what can happen, even though that box of chiral molecules is made of a bunch of randomly oriented molecules. It's crazy that that can happen. Now, that's only if you have one of the enantiomers. Remember, an enantiomer pair is the one that looks like this and its mirror image, that's an enantiomer pair. If you have a what's called a racemic mixture of these, just equal numbers of them, I was talking about the um, <clears throat> ibuprofen, then not much is going to happen. Okay, so one of them is going to rotate light one direction, one of them is going to rotate light the other direction, and, and all in all, you're going to find that the light's not rotated. So you need to have either just a majority of one or just pure of one, and then you're going to get consistent light rotation in one direction. But again, how can that be when they're completely randomly oriented? So that is our introduction to light. Now, let's look at this and think about what might happen. Now, if I was walking through a crowd of people and I was shaking hands with people as I went through, I'm saying, hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? And every time I shook hands with someone who was shorter than me, I turned to the left. Just, just a little, just a tiny, tiny bit. I turned to the left, just a little. And every time I shook hands with someone who was taller than me, I turned to the right, just a little. What would happen to me as I went through that room? Well, it would totally depend on whether there were more people taller than me or more people shorter than me. Right? If it was roughly equal, I'd kind of turn left every once in a while, I'd turn right every once in a while, and I'd eventually just keep going straight. But if there were a bunch of shorter people, I'd turn left a little, and 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 eventually I'd be going in a different direction. Or if there were a bunch of people taller than me, I'd be going in the opposite direction. But that is assuming that everybody's oriented towards me, right? What if they're oriented away from me? Like, wouldn't somebody who's, let's see, what should I say, shorter than me, is off to the left, wouldn't somebody who's shorter than me, if they're back is to me and I pretend to like shake their hand, wouldn't that mean like I'd be shaking a kind of a cross and then I, I'd be turning right because it would kind of backwards up. And, and, and that would seem like that at first, but it turns out that's not how the molecules work. They're not like shaking hands with the light. Right? So what are they doing? Well, it turns out in order to know what they are doing and how that affects us, we have to think a little bit about springs. And like springs. Where did springs come into this? They'll come into this in just a moment. And so if we think about a spring, it turns out that no matter which direction the spring is oriented, it curves in the same direction for us. So I made a little spring this morning and I've got my little spring here and this is the front of the spring. And now what I want you to do is notice how the front of the spring I'm going to lift it up here. It goes this direction, right? So it goes this direction. Now I'm going to turn the spring around doot, 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 and now rotate it just so it's easy, same orientation here. And what is the front of the spring doing? It's going in this direction. So notice, no matter which way I turn my spring, it's always curving in the same direction. Hmm, that's interesting. So there must be something kind of spring-like about chiral molecules. Because there, we can say, hey, look, even if I'm oriented in the opposite direction, there's something about the circular nature of a spring that no matter which direction my spring is oriented, and I know that some of you are going to go out and you're going to find yourself a slinky and you're like, that, that totally doesn't make sense. But it, it, that's what happens. It's really kind of cool, actually. So there's something spring-like about it, but we, we haven't figured out anything spring-like about light or spring-like about our molecules yet, okay? So the next thing we have to do is think about how is that related to a spring? Well, it turns out that linearly polarized light, if we have light that looks like this coming towards us, it turns out it's not actually just light that's going this direction. In fact, light doesn't do that. Light doesn't just go one direction. Light is always rotating. So I said, you know, we can get the circularly polarized light that as it travels, it rotates. Turns out all light is doing that. All light is rotating as it travels. So all light is actually acting like a spring as it travels. It's going in one direction or in the other direction. 
So what is polarized light then if to us it looks like it's doing that? It turns out polarized light is a combination of rotating light that's rotating clockwise and rotating light that's rotating counterclockwise. Since they're waves, when we have the wave nature of light, a counterclockwise one and a clockwise one adds up to something that looks up and down. Let me illustrate that for you real quick as best I can. So let's say we've got one thing of light and it's rotating as it goes. But that rotation, like I said, there's some rotating clockwise, there's some rotating counterclockwise, and when we add up those waves, it looks to us like there's nothing going on. So let's look at these little dots. If I were to add these dots up, what do I get? I get nothing, right? Top, bottom, I average those out, I get in the middle. So let's move this guy over this direction and this guy over this direction. Oops, I've got, I've got to go the opposite way, don't I? Um, yeah, so I've got to go the opposite direction. The all light's rotating at the same speed the way we set this thing up. So I've got that first one rotating counterclockwise. I've got that second one rotating clockwise. If I average those out up and down, they cancel out. This one's going up by that much, that one's going down by that much, but now they're both going to the left. And so I get light that looks like it's going to the left. And if I do that a little bit more, I get this guy to travel this way and this guy to travel this way, then I get light that looks like it's going to the left even more. And then as I keep going, the top and bottom, if these things are rotating perfectly the same, the top bottom parts always cancel out. Okay? But sometimes we get far shifted off to the left, sometimes we get far shifted off to the right. And so what it looks to us is that this light is just going backwards left and right because in the waves the top and bottom parts always cancel out. And so that's how we actually get linearly polarized light is a combination of light going in different directions at the same time coming towards us and then it adds up so that it looks like it's just going like that. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But how does that relate back to our chiral molecule? Well, it turns out that the chiral molecule, because it has a specific direction, right? We say, oh, look, as we go in one direction, we go red, white, green. But if I do the same thing in this one, I go red, green, white, trying to go the same direction. So there's a directionality to the order in which it kind of interacts with that molecule. And so as you've got light going this direction, it turns out that the way the electrons are arranged in there, and again, way too much detail that we're not going to go into, the way the electrons are arranged in there, one direction, the light's going to interact with it more than in the other direction. You could kind of think about that, right? If it's going in this direction and it likes going in this direction, it's going to interact with it a little bit more than if it does it in this direction. And because there is a directionality to this molecule that's the same whether I turn it this way or that way, then <coughs> we're going to get that light in one direction is going to interact with the molecule more than light in the other direction. What does that do? It turns out it slows down the light in one direction. And the net effect, and I'm not going to show you all the math and stuff involved in that, but the net effect of slowing down the light in one direction and not slowing down the light in the other direction is that now, instead of these guys being in sync and everything going back and forth, they're now slightly out of sync and it looks like the light is going back and forth in this direction. It's not canceling out perfectly top to bottom anymore, it's now canceling out in different directions because the light in traveling in one rotation is interacting differently than the light traveling in the other rotation. And you end up on the outside, on the other side of that box where you've got your chiral molecule, you end up with light that looks like it's been rotated. And it actually hasn't been rotated per se, it's just slowed down in one direction and not slowed down in the other direction but as a wave the net effect looks like polar or looks like rotation so that's my kind of really surface level introduction to how light is rotated in organic molecules 
people who know better than I do are, are probably going to take offense at a bunch of the things I said because I really simplified it. I, I didn't go all the details. I kind of glossed over some things. But to me, it's a satisfying enough explanation. Okay, that's why randomly oriented molecules can rotate light. Is two things. That light, polarized light, is actually made up of circularly polarized light going in different directions. And these guys are like springs that as I interact going in one direction, I always have the same interaction order no matter which way my molecule is oriented. So hopefully that was useful for you. If it made you cry, then just ignore it. You don't need to know it. It was just for my purposes, I can say, oh yeah, I told my students why light is rotated in one direction. Thanks so much and have a wonderful day.